The second one is, before I forget, the anonymous person ask, um, <laughs> the millennium versus uh, the new heavens and new earth. What's the difference? And um, really, uh, one word is the difference, but I'll elaborate on it, and it's this. Sin is still present here. It's just subdued. It's just um, suppressed by God, held back. Uh, but it's, it's still percolating until almost everyone rebels against God. Even though it appears biblically that the millennium is populated by only believers. And, and we'll, we'll go through that in uh, Matthew 25 and Revelation uh, 20. So that was the anonymous question. And Tom is here tonight, even though he's anonymous. And let's, let's do um, this, because the, uh, in Matthew 25, we have the sheep and goat judgment, and the millennium starts. So let's go to Matthew 25. And it says uh, in verse 31, the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him. We've already covered that. That's the second coming. And then uh, he, he says uh, to those on his right, uh, here we go, verse 33, he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left, and the king will say to those on his right, the sheep, those who, who believe in him. Sheep and goat judgment is between those who believe and those who don't. And God separates everybody on earth, everybody that survives the tribulation. So basically, uh, the millennium, you, you have the tribulation period, and at the end of the tribulation, the second coming of Christ, and then after that, uh, you have the sheep and goat uh, judgment, this judgment, this separation that you see in Matthew 25. And so everybody that survives a tribulation goes into this and they go into two groupings, sheep and goats. And uh, how do we know who's who? Well, I mean, what does the Lord say about them? Um, and, the, and the king will say in verse 34 to those in his right hand, I should have switched those, so he's up here looking down there on his right hand. The king will say to those, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I was hungry, you gave me drink, all that. And then he will say in verse 41, To those on his left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So the sheep go into the millennium, the kingdom, and the goats head to the waiting room for hell because no one's in hell yet. So this is tribulation. This is Revelation uh, 6 through 18. Second coming, Revelation 19. Sheep and goat judgment, Matthew 25. Millennium, Revelation 20. So the question was, What's the difference between the millennium and the new heavens? Right here. Watch what happens in Revelation 20. And, and we've looked at this many times, but it's staggering just to look at it for this reason. The staggering power of sin. And last time, what someone asked was kind of what the millennium was like. And I told them that God sets up a visitor center. This is a millennium millennium. It's a thousand years. That's repeated. Notice what it says um, in chapter 20, uh, verse 2, thousand years, verse 3, thousand years, verse 4 at the end, a thousand years, verse 5, a thousand years, verse 6, a thousand years, and verse 7, a thousand years. One, two, three, four, five, six times it says a thousand years. So it's a thousand years. God said so six times. And mille means a thousand. And so that millennium is not in the Bible. A thousand years. It's into the kingdom. It's into this thousand-year millennial rule, the thousand-year rule of Christ. And so they go into it. 
and the thousand years goes on. And verse 2, Satan is suppressed. So Satan is locked up. He's locked down, actually, uh, in the pit. He is on lockdown. Now, remember, we saw this morning in 1 John 5, 19, that all of the world system is being governed in its malignancy by Satan. He is pervading, influencing, and energizing all the, and, and magnifying all the sin that's, that's, that we're born with, and he's just inflaming it and, and going on. All of the world, he is the God of this world. Everything we looked at this morning. So the commander-in-chief gets locked down. That's in chapter 20, um, verse 2. And he's in the bottomless pit uh, for that, that whole time. The abusas, the, the place of, of being separated and under incarceration. Now look at verse 7. When the thousand years have expired, Satan is released from his prison. And look at verse 8, Revelation 28. This is the difference between new heavens and new earth and the millennium. Everyone can still be deceived. In other words, the people alive under their fig trees and by their vines in this, this nearly perfect kind of like garden, I mean, it's what everybody wants to go on vacation to, where there's no poisonous anything. It's kind of like Kauai, you know, where they don't have any poisonous snakes and everything. It's just such a special place, you know, and it rains all the time and everything grows big and there's fruit and fish and clean water and it smells nice and everything. Uh, it's, they're in this kind of Hawaiian island paradise, but sin is still there, just waiting. And so what happens, the, Satan is released, verse 7. He deceives the nations, which are in the four corners, verse 8 of Revelation 20. And they go out the breadth of the earth, verse 9. So everyone except the people camping with God. You know what it comes down to? What it's always come down to. Few there be that find it. Few there be that Jesus said, the straight and narrow is the way, and few there be that find the way. And it's only when God reaches down to Rahab's, reaches down and knocks Paul's off their horses, reaches down and, and scares the people of Nineveh to death so they repent. It's only when God directly intervenes that people come to him. The miracle is not... The, the miracle is, is not that... that we're saved. The miracle is that anyone is saved. We're all desperately wicked. It's only when God initiates. Anything God does not hold gets worse. He didn't hold Satan. He got worse. Fell away. Started this whole mess. We have to be kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. So God isn't holding. He's just holding back the, the, the malignity of sin. But as soon as he lets Satan out, and that's, that's why we need to be praying to be delivered, God holds back sin, suppresses it, until Satan is let out, and Satan ramps it up. And he ramps it up so big that, verse 9, they went up the breadth of the earth, they surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city, and God says, enough is enough. That's it. And, he, and fire, verse 9, comes down from God out of heaven. So another difference between the millennium, which is totally on earth, and heaven is, so number two, the first one is sin, um, Tom. The second one is the merging, the new heavens and new earth of heaven and earth the merging of heaven and earth, which is Revelation 21. So in 20, we see that the characteristic of the millennium is that sin is still present. But in Revelation 21, now keep looking after God burns them all up in the great white throne, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So Revelation 21 doesn't explain what 2 Peter 3 says. 2 Peter 3 says that God 
just like he flooded the whole earth with water with Noah, God burns up the entire universe with fire. The first time he destroyed the whole earth alone, not the universe, just the earth with water. But 2 Peter 3 says that God dissolves everything, heavens and earth. He dissolves and reconstitutes. Now, not heaven, his throne, and all the angels in the crystal sea. The physical world. The, the physical world permeated with sin and the spiritual world fallen and following the devil. All of that, in fact, Romans 8 says that it's not just earth. Uh, Romans 8 says that the whole universe groans. The universe, the, the, the largest supernova ever seen that they just detected and the new did you hear about Einstein's waves of gravity and all that universe is groaning because sin has permeated it but what happens is there's a new heavens in Revelation 21 and a new earth and I John verse 2 saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven and the new Jerusalem is this cube uh, that, that is gigantic it, it says um, that it's laid out in a square uh, in verse uh, 16 of 21, 12,000 furlongs. And so it's, it's this gigantic, um, if, if you looked at the, the new heaven and new earth, here's earth and this 1,200 furlong cube is uh, the new Jerusalem. You know, we always sing, I saw the new Jerusalem you cannot put on an 8,000 mile in diameter earth a 1,200 furlong cube and have it spinning at 1,000 miles an hour under current laws of physics. But who invented physics? Newton only discovered elements of it. And Einstein discovered some too. But the inventor is going to reconstitute the universe so he can put this New Jerusalem cube right on the earth. And so the difference is only two. In the new heavens and new earth, which was the question, everything is new. Everything is new uh, as far as sin, uh, heavens. Sin is gone, so no sin. And earth and heaven, the new Jerusalem, are merged. You say, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. Because we're, during the millennium, where are we? We're with the Lord. But the apostles, at least, and others, are going to reign on the earth. And so there's, before they're merged, they're, the, the heavenly city is there. It's still a cube. And they're going like this. There seems to be, we're going back and forth, kind of like the angels came and went and disappeared and Jesus would disappear and come back. And, and, but then God merges them and that's where we get into everything in, that Tom didn't ask about in 21 and 22. 